Welcome back to this World of Warcraft Let's Play. You're with Sambo, and joining us as always is Seraphis, our level 22 Worgen Mage. Say good day, Seraphis. Greetings. Greetings to you as well, and indeed, greetings to, look at this, Malfurion Stormrage. Of course, if you joined us in the last episode, you might well remember that we'd done a whole bunch of tasks for him uh, involving these particular NPCs here Elder Brownpaw, Selin, the Ancient of War, and of course, Arum, the good old Wildkin, the Boomkin. And now all that remains for us to do, if we check it in our quest log here, is to leave the dream. You can see that we have a task here to speak to Malfurion at the Eye of the Vortex in Darkshaw, which of course is exactly where we are. Hold on tight, Seraphis, he says. The journey back to the waking world can be a little rough on unprepared minds and bodies. All right, let's see what happens leaving the dream. You're just in time, Seraphis. I don't know how much longer we can hold. Right, so look at this, the eye of all storms. Twilight riders circle the skies above the vortex. Now let's have a look up, and in fact you can see them there. Look at that, if we um, actually click on one, you can see them riding drakes there. The twilight riders, they're level 17. I fear it is their magic uh, that has kept the cataclysmic forces from being contained by our efforts. Take to the skies with Thesera, and there she is, Thesera over there. Uh, of course, that's why we had to help her out, because we needed her help. And destroy the riders and the portal from whence they came. Ride Thesera to defeat 12 Twilight Riders and destroy the Twilight Purple, uh, Portal. So this is very cool, because it sounds to me like we're actually going to get to ride her, which is fantastic, and go up there and take out these Twilight Riders up here. And not only that, but we've got a couple of really cool rewards here. One, of course, that we can't use because it's a mace, and we can't use a mace. It's worth eight silver to sell, but this one here, the Emerald Vest, you can see there, uh, when we do a, a static tooltip compare, it's actually got plus 13 armor, it's got one extra intellect, which is fantastic, and four extra stamina. And if we uh, control click on that to have a look at it, you can see, actually, it's quite weird. It's a vest, not a dress, which is very interesting. It's not um, very normal that you actually get something like that as a mage. Normally as a mage, of course, you're wearing a dress, but that's okay. All right, so we'll accept that. Thank you very much, and it looks like we have to uh, hop over here, and we're probably going to get a ride symbol on Thesera. Let's have a look. Yeah, so you can see there the green arrow, and of course that is the riding symbol, which means if we right-click on her, we will actually mount her, which is so cool. And, you know, I love the dragons in WoW. How awesome is that? She's um, a full-on boss. You can see there, level question mark. Uh, we don't know what level she is, but she's got 1.4 almost million uh, hit points, so that's incredible. Anyway, time for us to ride her. And there we go, we're up, and you can see we've got a couple of um, abilities here that have come up. The first one here is Emerald Barrage, inflict nature damage on Twilight Riders and the Twilight Portal. So if we we can actually highlight the Twilight Purple Portal there and actually fire that off, which is really cool. And you can see it's health. So we can keep doing that. And we've also got land. So we can actually land her as well. But how amazing is this? We're actually flying through this twilight portal through the eye of the vortex here. And there we go. We've destroyed the portal. And now it's time to destroy the twilight rider. So it's dragon on dragon here. As we fly around in the swirling um, mists here. With all sorts of different things um, flying past us. Like trees and debris. And oh my god, it's amazing. And look at that. We've got these... Um, Emerald Barrage firing off. You can see them there. And all we need to do is target these guys. There we go. One flying right past us. Target them. And then we just simply click one or click on the Emerald Barrage uh, icon there in the hopper. That's very cool. So we take on her abilities. Five of 12 slain. I'm just selecting them with the mouse there. Of course, there we go. Another Barrage. Another one down. As we're way up high, you can see the ground below us there. You can see Malfurion Storm Rage. And in fact, you can see a room and all the rest of them. There we go, another Twilight Rider. And another one. There's a very small cooldown on these, so uh, it's not too bad. We can just almost spam it, if you like. 9 out of 12, 10 out of 12. What are we up to? 9 out of 12 still. There we go, 10 out of 12. 11 out of 12, and one more. There we go, 12 out of 12. Our job is done as we look down on Darkshore from way up high. Look at that view, will you? It's absolutely incredible. I just love this game sometimes. Now, of course, we have to click the ability to land. So we're going to do that. 
and that should take us gently down hopefully as we uh, plunge through this swirling eye of the vortex so cool such a cool view from way up here as well and of course later on when you're a high enough level and you get the riding skill that allows you to ride in old Azeroth you can actually ride your own mount around here as well instead of having to walk and there we go that is us as the camera slowly zooms back in to where it was thank you very much nice little touch there and what do we got oh one twilight portal slain we already did that I wonder why it didn't count. Gosh, we have to go back up again. That was a bit silly. Let's try that again then. Twilight Portal. See if we can highlight it. There it is. And we'll do the old... Oh, closer. we're out of range. Now we're not. Let's see if we can kill this off. But that was bizarre because we already did that. I'm not sure why it didn't count. It actually came up on the screen and said it. There we go. That's better. Now let's land. Down we go. That was most strange indeed. Not sure why it did that. But definitely the quest now says return to Malfurion Stormrage at the Eye of the Vortex in Darkshore. So we've definitely, definitely done it. That was very, very strange. So I wonder what's going to happen after this. Of course, I've never done these quests before because they're all new post-cataclysm. All the quests here were nothing like this. And of course, there was never a swirling Eye of the Vortex here before either. So... Alright, talking hey, to Malfurion Stormrage, the eye of all storms, we're turning the tide, Seraphis. We should be able to contain further damage. Much work still remains to be done. I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> oh, excuse me, folks. Alright, so we get to choose our reward. We'll choose this emerald vest. There we go, and he's got Maybe another quest for us, straight. mounting the offensive. Our work in Dark Shore is not yet done. We might have stopped the landmass from shattering, but our enemies still have a strong presence in the area. So uh, I want you to contact a group of druids at the Grove of the Ancients, far to the south. They are led by an old friend of mine, Belren of the Claw. Tell them uh, that the time has come to take the battle to our foes. I will come to aid them as soon as we stabilize the area. So we need to speak to Belren of the Claw at the Grove of the Ancients in Darkshore. We can have a look on the good old map where that is. So if I uh, make the map larger, you can see it's down here. And in fact, you may not may or may not be able to see this on the YouTube video, but there's actually a flight point down there as well. So we're just going to make our way down there. I think we have to run, and of course we've got our mount now, so that's okay. But this is another one of those special uh, places. So the Grove of the Ancients. Now, that always used to be here. And I remember back in the early, early days, back when I was playing uh, with my very old friends uh, when we first started playing WoW, I was a human paladin. And that meant, of course, that I was over here in Stormwind. That's where I grew up in the Eastern Kingdoms in uh, Elwyn Forest. That's where I grew up. And we were, had been questing around here. And at about this level, I think it was about level 20, we decided to take the big journey. Uh, we took a boat and took a big journey across to the other continent. Of course, we'd never been there. We'd heard all sorts of horror stories about how it was filled with the Horde, which of course is the um, other faction, the opposing faction to us being the Alliance. And it was a big journey. We had to make our way up all the way through, um, uh, of course, Elwyn Forest, and then up through the Burning Steps, the Searing Gorge, and we made our way to Iron Forge, and then we had to walk all the way uh, up through the Wetlands and Arathi Highlands, um, through South Shore, and then we ended up coming through and into... No, actually, we uh, stayed in the Wetlands, and we ended up here at Menethor Harbour, and that's in the old days where you took a boat from. And you'd cross the big ocean here, and you'd end up in Kalimdor. Now, we ended up over here, I think, in Orbedine, actually. And what we were doing was we were trying to run uh, all the way. No, actually, it wasn't Orbedine. That's right. It was somewhere south. It might have been even Theramore over here. I can't remember. But what I do remember is that we had to actually run all the way up Darkshore. And uh, back then, I remember going past this Grove of the Ancients because it was a bit off the beaten track. I remember saying to my friends, what on earth is that? And we went over and took a look and we were absolutely amazed that there was like a different place there that we could just wander around and there were some NPCs and some old night elf ruins and stuff. So that place, believe it or not, has a really special uh, place in my heart because it's something that I remember from absolute years ago. So it's great to know that it's still there. Anyway, let's mount up because we've got a bit of a long journey as we're going to head down south. We'll follow the path. Because, of course, um, that's probably one of the quickest and safest ways to get there. And of course, it's so nice now having our mount. 
And we've got two of them. Uh, don't forget, we've got either the um, Worgen Racial there, the Running Wild, or we've got this new one, which is the Winged Guardian, which was our store-bought one from the Blizzard store. Now, someone in our videos the other day was saying, hey, what characters actually get the mount if you buy one from a store? And it's the same with pets as well, if you buy a companion pet. Um, all of your characters is the answer to that. Now, both past, present, and future. So, in other words, if you have an old character from years ago, and you go and buy a mount from the store. Um, what is that? It's a wisp. Darkshore wisp, then you. Uh, and you go and buy a mount from the store, it will actually appear on all of your existing characters that will arrive in their mailbox with, I think, a message from May Francis from Deloran. Of course, those of you who have been to Deloran will know exactly who she is. She's the pet dealer up there. And isn't it cool that we get XP for doing mining, by the way? That's a relatively new thing. Uh, in fact, we have to cross over here because the blooming Cataclysm went and put a great big hole in the road, as you can see. Yep, whoops. Right, so where are we? Nearly there. Um, so yeah, if you do buy a store-bought mount, you will um, absolutely get it for all of your characters, so no worries there. <clears throat> Alright, now where are we going? Because all of this is messing things up. We're trying to get across. Looks like we probably have to go across here. And look at that. The path is lit by a nice copper vein. Oh, and the Wild Bend River. Now, this is another iconic place in Darkshore. You may remember there was some quests. In fact, I think there was a quest called Wild Bend River. And you can see this is all opened up now. And of course, there's way more than one river in Darkshore now, thanks to the Cataclysm and the oceans pouring in into the more of the Void up the top there. Now we have lots and lots of rivers. Of course, in the old days, you only used to have a couple. And one of them was the Wild Bend River. And you can see now the Grove of the Ancients has opened up. So it's going to be very interesting for me to see how much it's changed post-Cataclysm. Um, once again, these are places that I haven't been uh, since the Cataclysm expansion. So it's all new for me as much as it is for you and oh there's the old bridge gosh I remember this it was amazing it's oh and this was here as well goodness me look at that there's a corpse there oh dear I remember all of this except um, of course it was a lot different because this here was actually a lake it wasn't a great big hole in the ground like it is now so yeah, wow, that's really interesting how they've uh, managed to, to change it up, but still keep the iconic bits the same. And here we are in the Grove of the Ancients, and you can see the Ancients around here. <clears throat> this is them all standing around. They look like trees, but you can see they've actually got faces. Yep, so all of these are, in fact, old Ancients. And, okay, so, gosh, this has changed a lot. Let's just scoot through the other side for a second, because normally you follow this little path off the main, um, the main path, and in fact, that should be coming up just over here somewhere. So by the main path, I mean the main road that actually um, goes uh, north and south up and down Darkshore, which is here. Okay, so that's the north-south road. Um, and you can see probably over here will be the beach. Yeah, it's over there in the distance. And what you'd do is you'd, you'd be riding along here and you'd see these little things here, these little signposts, and you go, oh, what is this up here? There's a little grove in here, and sure enough, it would come up there with the Grove of the Ancients. Now, I did notice on the way in that there was a flight master somewhere around here. Where is it? Oh, I went right past it. There we go. So that's really handy. Now, we're going to have to use this very shortly because we need to get ourselves back to Darnassus. There we go. So now we've got this extra flight master, and that never used to be here, by the way. You used to have to actually go all the way down to um, Ashenvale to get the next flight point, and the only other one was up in Aberdeen. So it was a heck of a long run between flight points. Now you can see they've made things a lot easier by putting one kind of halfway. So from here we can fly all the way back up to Lord Dunnell, and of course that should be intimately familiar with you. That's where we spent a lot of time questing up north. Or we can fly over to Rutherin Village, or indeed to Darnassus. So very handy having that there. Hello to you. Greetings, Greetings to you as well. All right, and I'm pretty sure that this Onu here, the Ancient of Lore, and a lot of these particular characters were the same ones that were always here. It just looks a little bit different now. There's definitely a lot more characters here. And, of course, you can see a bunch of quests as well. As we get a little bit of lag... Just going to run around a bit to see if we can eradicate that. Okay, Belrin of the Claw. That's an old favourite of mine too. He's been here for ages. What brings you here? What brings you here? Mounting the offensive. And if Malfurion placed his trust in you, then so shall I. You'll find that our enemies greatly outnumber us this far south. Where brute force and numbers fail us, strategy and guile will prove our biggest advantages. All right. 
Good luck, Let's see friend. what he's got for us. How may I help? Leave no tracks. To the southwest lies the corpse of a being somehow related to the old gods that the Twilight's Hammer cultists worship. Oh, now I know what this is. He was defeated before our time, if not by the Titans themselves, certainly by one of their creations. We've noticed an increase in cult activity in that area, which can only mean something terrible is amiss. We're going to need to find out what they're planning to do there and why. Take this figurine. It'll help you avoid being detected while you gather intelligence. Okay, so yeah, I thought it was this. Here we go. Sneak into the Master's Glaive using the Panther figurine and spy on the Twilight's Hammer. The stars guide <clears throat> now, this is very interesting. I'm going to open up the map here because it's down here. The, the, um, the uh, what's it called? The Master's Glaive is down here. And it's another iconic area of Darkshawn. In fact, when I first came here, I was, uh, again, running up the road, and I looked over to the west and saw this great big thing there and thought, what on earth is that? Because it basically looks like a big sword sticking out of the ground with a big lump on it. Um, and it wasn't until I read up on my lore that um, it was sort of discovered that it's possibly the body of an old titan. And, of course, if you want to learn up on your Warcraft um, lore, you should go look at WoW Wiki and look up titans, because basically they were the old gods if you like they uh, have the power to destroy the earth and create the earth and all, all those sort of things some really cool stuff and they believe that this one down here where that one is where we're going to is uh, basically the old corpse of one which is really cool really old but in the old days you definitely didn't have anything to keep you stealth and protected you had to wander in there uh, fully in the view of all the enemies there all the twilight cultists so it was actually quite an effort to get in there and out again without being killed because they were quite powerful for the level you have been sent hello hello how can we help you? My first concern right now is for the thistle bear families who call what's left of these woods home. Just to our south, beyond the bear shrine, an entire generation has fallen ill, gruesomely ill. Seraphis, I don't know what they're suffering from, but it's consumed them from within. It pains me that a whole generation is beyond saving, but we've got to kill them off so that the earth can reclaim their bodies. And more importantly, we need to find the source. So investigate the shallow lake they drink from. So we have to kill six consumed thistle bears and investigate the lake, lake that Go they're drinking this. from. So let's have a look at those and see where it is. Okay, so that's actually just to the south of us. So we'll probably uh, go and knock that one off first. Uh, we've also got ourselves a general goods vendor here, which is nice and handy. My goods are of the highest quality. Goods are of the highest quality. We get to have a bit of a repair up. That's always very handy. And of course sell a whole bunch of grey items, which is nice. Um, there's the panther figurine, by the way. This is the quest item that we've got. Oh, that's awesome. It transforms us into a prowling panther, undetectable to most enemies. Wow, okay, that's a lot different than what it used to be like. Um, but very cool. We actually get to uh, become a panther. And you can see here we've got a nice couple of greens, uh, which is very nice. I'm going to sell off ones that are soul bound because we don't need them anymore soulbound leather we can't put that on the auction house of course can't put anything on the auction house that is bound to you we've got a green leather bag we'll definitely put that on the auction house that's for sure uh, what do we got here shadow wands got a whole bunch of those for some reason they can go up on the ah we've got anything else here that's soulbound yes a staff and that's worse than what we've got in terms of the stats that we need so we'll definitely sell that to the vendor. And you can see this is good because we're clearing up some of our bag space, which we desperately need to do. All right, fantastic. Looks like we're off. Oh, and you can see also if you are short on bags at this point, if you've never got yourself to the AH or if you don't have any friends that can make bags for you, uh, i.e. tailorers, you can actually buy some bags from the uh, general goods vendors now. You've got a six slot bag there and an eight slot bag and they're nice and cheap now as well. Okay, so can we use milk now? Let's have a look. Yes, looks like we can. Um, can we use, let's see, what do we got here? Melon juice. Okay, so the ones we're currently using, this is for replenishing our mana, right? So it's drinks. Restores 835 mana over 24 seconds. Ice cold milk is 437. Right, so we want to keep the melon juice, which is a greater tier of um, drink, if you like. All right, another quest here from Foreal Broadleaf. I am on. I am honoured. Our ancestors lived amongst or alongside the Blackwood Firbolgs for generations, but recently we have lost contact with their settlements deeper in the forest. One of their larger villages, Blackwood Hold, can be found to the south. Travel there and find Elder Brog. Ask him why his people have withdrawn from us and offer your help if necessary. Very cool. I like the Firbolg. Let's see what happened to them and whereabouts we need to go to find them. 
And it looks like they are just south of where we need to go for the watering hole and the thistle bears. So you know what that means folks, it means we're off to see some thistle bears. Let's um, convert to our running wild form, which of course is our Worgen racial mount effectively. As we race off into the forest, having a look on the quest log here, here we go, some thistle bears, grizzled thistle bears. Now I thought we had to, oh we have to kill them but that's not the right ones, interesting. Ah, uh, here we go, consumed ones. Right, so looks like this lake is a bit off in its color as well, so I'd say that's probably the source. Let's open up with the good old Frostbolt slowing them down. Oh, and he charged us anyway, that was no good. The Frostbolt didn't do us any good there because they charge, and of course char a charge will override that um, debuff that they get. Consumed a thistle bear slain, and of course, because it is a bear, we can skin it, except it requires skinning 80. No, that's no good. So I'm going to hit P and bring up our profession log. Let's see what we are at with skinning. Where is it? Where's my skinning? Here we go. We are only 62. Oh dear, that is terrible because it basically means that from this point out, the mobs are going to be of a high enough um, level that we won't be able to skin them unless we train up. So that means we're going to have to go back to an earlier zone and actually level up our skinning on some lower level mobs. So let that be a lesson to you folks. That's absolutely what you don't want to happen. You want to be skinning up as much as possible and, oh, Fleetfoot, I thought that was a, a rare for a moment. Um, don't end up in this situation like I have because it means you have to backtrack. I mean, these these mobs are too high for us to do any sort of skinning on. So we're going to have to go back up to the northern section of the zone and just basically farm mobs in order to skin them uh, in order to get our skinning up to a level uh, 80 in order to be able to carry on in these higher level zones. So it's a bit of a shame there and like I say a good warning, uh, pay attention unlike me. Right so what are we up to? We have done three of six of these consumed bears, uh, four now. And while we're here, let's have a look down the bottom. It looks to me like there's something weird going on down the bottom of the lake. And look at that. It is watering a hole investigated. All we had to do was get nearby it. So it wasn't too bad. Nice and easy. As we swim out, let's find some more of these consumed uh, thistle bears. We'll get ourselves uh, at a nice safe distance. And clear casting. I love that sound because of course it means it's a free cast for the next cast. That being one of our talents, of course. And you can see, by the way, our next talent point is at level 23. And we're basically about a quarter of the way from hitting that up as well. So we're nearly there. Just using tab targeting as well, just to choose the next available target. We need to target something first. And for some reason, we lost our target. That's weird. That's been happening a couple of times. Late. Not sure exactly how we lose it, but uh, anyway, there we go. All right, let's have a look on our map and see what else we can do, seeing as we're here. I think we can go and talk to the Blackwood Furbolg. Yep, we'll definitely go and uh, say g'day, seeing as we're so close. As we roam about in the glorious, uh, uh, not Ashenvale, the glorious dark shore here. And here we go, here is the village. And you can see, oh dear, okay, so we've actually got aggro ones here. We've got a Madden Blackwold, and you can see we've got a camp here, and they're corrupted and maddened, so they're actually red. They're going to aggro on us. And we can see that our quest guy, Elder Brog, is actually being held prisoner or something uh, in the center there. So we just want to avoid these. Oh, he says avoid them as we don't avoid them. Whoops. And they're level 19, by the way, so quite a large jump from the enemies that we've been fighting so far. So that's good though, I mean we've got to watch out and be a bit more careful because they can probably kill us. But of course it means that we're going to get nice XP and you can see there, 102 XP for that particular kill there. Nice, and they're dropping cloth as well. Right, here we go. Elder Brog. Why have you come here, outsider? And we tell him that we were sent by Foriel Broadleaf at the Grove of the Ancients and he seems to relax slightly. The elf is right, the forces of Felwood have seeped into the dark shore and sickened my people. Now that's an interesting one by the way. Felwood you can see here on the map is the adjacent zone to Darkshore that we're slowly uncovering bit by bit. Now Felwood is at the top here, it's this bit uh, just right next door. And if you ever go to Felwood, which of course we will, you'll tell, be able to tell immediately because it's full of green slime and corruption. And it's quite a cool place to quest actually. Anyway, let's complete this quest, see what he's got for us. 
The Bears Poor, the foul satyr of Felwood, uh, Felwood rather, have started to introduce their poison into Darkshore, into our lands. Their corruption kills the land and twists the creatures who live in it. My people are no exception. Our magic alone is not enough to bring them back to their senses. There's a herb called Bears Paw that we use to break fevers and fortify the weak. With its help, we may be able to break the influence of the satyr. The herb grows in the wilds around the village. So we need to go out and hunt eight stalks of bear's paw, which is a herb, and bring them to this guy here, Elder Brol. All right, so let's go out and do that. Now, I'm assuming that they're going to be... Let's have a look on the map. Um, where are we? Bear's paw, leave no tracks. Right, they're going to be over in this general direction. So we're probably going to have to... Yeah, and I can see some glowing there. We're going to have to knock some... Whoa! Let's get out of the way there. We'll snap freeze this guy into place. And oh, look, there's one right there, Bear's Paw. Now, by the. Oh, I've still got the other guy targeted. Can you believe it? What an idiot. Can't believe I did that. Wow. And now we've aggroed two of them. This is going to be very interesting. And I've been knocked down, which prevents me from casting. We are going to have to polymorph this young grizzled bear here because we are going to die. And we did die. Gosh, just as we we're saying, you've got to be careful around here because you could die. What happens? That's right, I prove myself correct. I should have said that we live. Maybe I would have lived. Who knows? I doubt it very much. Yes. Anyway, now, of course, just refreshing your memories with what happens when you die. Basically, it's a corpse run. And, of course, you want to follow the red arrow on your minimap. And if you open up your main map, of course, you can actually see your corpse. It's a tombstone. There it is down there uh, on the map. And you just basically want to follow that. If you don't want to run all the way, and by the way, you do get a um, running speed increase when you're running around the world as a ghost. Um, if you don't want to do that, you can actually just talk to the spirit healer near where you res. And you can always return to them by hitting this button up the top here, return to graveyard. And that means you can just instantly come back to life. But you do suffer durability. Everything in your inventory and that you're wearing suffers a 25% durability hit. Um, you also get afflicted with a resurre re resurrection sickness debuff, which reduces all your stats by about 75%. So try and avoid it at all costs. Once you get near your corpse like we have here, just um, click accept and you're back. You know, you'll have about half health, but of course you can wait for that to regen. No problems. All right, let's see if we can take out this guy from afar, because we want that herb. We want the bear's paw. And there's the good old clear cast there. Free spell. Oh, look at that. They've got 11 health left, so the good old Frost Nova should finish them off nicely. There we go. Now, um, also be careful when you're looting things like bears. Make sure you hang on to the bear meat here that you get, because, of course, even if you're not a cook, you can sell that in the auction house for lots of money, because um, a lot of people don't like actually hunting down bear meat. So if they can just easily buy it from the auction house, they'll pay a premium price to do so. There's a little young... We must have aggroed that because it's uh, yellow, so we must have aggroed it accidentally. Now, just an interesting point, by the way. See these bear's paw, bear paw um, herbs here, and you can see that they're sparkling. And that icon there, the herb little um, sort of bo bouquet of herbs there, that's what it actually looks like if you are a herbalist when you're running around the world. You know how we find copper nodes, etc., etc.? I'm just going to use counterspell on that guy to silence him. Um, that's what it would look like if you're running around the world trying to find herbs to gather. Just so you know. All right, let's take out this guy while we're here as well. Because, of course, the other great thing about killing these things uh, is that they are worth lots of XP given their level. There we go, 86 XP there. It's just such a shame that we can't skin them. Oh, gosh. Again, let that be a lesson to you. Keep an eye on your professions and make sure you don't out-level them in terms of the zones. Very, very bad. All right, so we're looking for some more herbs. There's one over there. Let's see if we can uh, knock away this guy. Now, again, remember to use Counterspell, which interrupts. So as he starts casting, there you go. You can see him casting Wrath. We'll interrupt him with our Counterspell ability. And that also forces him to have to run towards us as, as well, which can be a handy thing to know. Now, of course, this has got quite a big cooldown. Still got 10 seconds left on that cooldown, so we aren't able to interrupt this guy. Hopefully, he won't kill us with his spell. And there we go, took him out in time. 
gathering some more herbs and listen to those sound effects you really do feel like you're in a forest here i absolutely love the sound the music and the atmosphere that the zones create in wow each one of course being so different let's do the counter spell there we go stop him from casting um yeah and each zone of course being so very different can't wait to show you like i said before in a previous episode can't wait to show you guys the snowy zones uh, we've got desert zones we've got molten lava zones we've got all sorts of different things seven six five left on that cooldown could have waited a little bit more but actually our health is not regening very fast at all and of course you might remember in the last episode it was whereas the previous episode it wasn't i'm not sure what it is that is causing that to happen but either way we actually need to have some food so we're gonna eat this haunch of meat not only to free up a slot in our bags but also to get our health up because look at that it's just not going up at all even when we're eating it's going up really slowly i honestly have no idea what's going on anyway um oh dear i've run out of time gosh you know playing wow time goes so fast isn't it it's just amazing that's right we've got plenty plenty to look forward to in the next episode as we do these quests we've got to finish off getting our bears pour the uh, herb that we're gathering we've also got to sneak into the master's glaive which is that old titan corpse using this our panther figurine which will turn us into a panther very exciting and of course we've got to go hand in our consumed quest where we investigated the thistle bears all of these of course back in at the grove of the ancients so i certainly hope you enjoyed that episode more importantly of course i certainly hope you'll join us in the next one uh, i do hope you're having a great day until the next episode though it's me sambo and seraphis our wargan mage saying take care we'll see you later and bye bye